Now, in the UK, power prices for today jumped to record levels as freezing temperatures are set to cause a surge in demand, just as a drop in wind generation causes a supply crunch. Joining us now is Bloomberg's Lizzie Burden. Uh, Lizzie, already in the throes of a cost of living crisis, what does this latest surge mean? Well, enchanting as it was to wake up to the snow. I don't know if you like it, Danny, but it really... <laughs> as long as I can get in in the morning, then I'm fine with it. <laughs> you should see the surge pricing on Uber. Ooh. It is painful in terms of people's energy bills. And we're expecting to see the peak of demand at around 5 p.m. in the UK today, which means that the day ahead price on the EPEX spot exchange for that hour has cleared an all time high of £2,500 a megawatt hour. To make matters worse, as Adrian says, the wind has weakened to almost zero. That reduces wind generated power supplies, of course. So if you can afford to have the heating on today, if you can work from home, today's the day, Manus. Today's that. Do you know where I went on Saturday? I gotta tell you, I went to see the penguins at Dubai Mall in the snow, <laughs> with the snow plow, with this massive ramp for skiing, and I felt like I was in a winter wonderland. It oh, really you're basically in the UK. In That's the why you've got a cough. I, <laughs> maybe, <Cold out. laughs> I, maybe I got it from the penguins. Maybe I got it from the penguins. Right, here we go. <laughs> it's just a thought. It was a nice. It was a nice day. Right. What do you do on a Saturday when it's 20, balmy 28 degrees? Go and play with the penguins. Now, uh, here's the, probably the, the, the more important thing, the economics angle for you, which is we've got a bunch of strikes coming up. The whole thing that I saw over the weekend is the army are coming. They're coming to bail out the strike action. How big is this strike action across the UK? Well, Manus, it's so big that you've got an emergency COBRA meeting this morning and another one planned for Wednesday. These are held by top officials when you have a national emergency or major disruption. And the government is planning to bring in the military and civil servants to cover for sea and air port workers over the next few weeks because, of course, the army can't strike, hence it is the last resort. But over the weekend, just yesterday, uh, you had the government rejecting an offer from from the nursing union uh, to meet to uh, suspend <coughs> industrial action in return for talks over pay. So you could see as many as 100,000 nursing staff on December the 15th and December the 20th in unprecedented walkouts here in the UK. But if you look at the offer that they're, they've put on the table, they want 5% on top of the RPI rate, which is 14.2%, which is really eye-watering, but they say this this is to make up for years of wage restraint. They say, uh, you clapped for us in the pandemic. It, do we really deserve a real terms pay cut now? So you have this drama unfolding in terms of strikes in the labor market. You have a new freezing temperatures hitting the UK. Got a lot of data out this week too before a BOE decision. I mean, how is this all going to feed into that decision? Well, the Bank of England is expected to hike the same as the ECB and the Fed by 50 basis points. But what's really interesting is Nomura and Bank of America have notes out pointing to the possibility of a four-way split on the Monetary Policy mm. Committee. You've got Silvana Tenreiro and Swati Dingra, the big doves of the committee, could vote for 25 basis points or no, vote, no hike at all because they're so concerned about the recession risks in the UK, when you have the 18-month monetary policy lag, they say we don't need a big hike in the grips of a recession. Um, but as you say, we've got this raft of data this week. The GDP figures in 10 minutes are expected to show that the economy bounced back in November. The jobs data tomorrow expected to show that the labour market's cooling. The inflation data on Wednesday expected to show that inflation's past its peak. But any surprises on any of those fronts could move the needle for the Bank of England. What's less likely to move the needle though, Danny, is since the last BOE meeting, we've had the fiscal statement from the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt. Uh, and what's interesting will be the Bank of England's assessment on whether this is a loosening or a tightening at the 18-month horizon. Of course, in the short term, it's a real boost in terms of yep. energy uh, covering household bills. But Deputy Governor Dave Ramsden has said it's not as likely as the data to move the needle.